Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and today we are going to be looking at the future perfect and the pluperfect passive tenses. Last time we had a look at how the perfect passive was formed, my favourite tense. We learned about the PPP and how to make it all agree. Uh, well, now we are going to move on and have a look at the future perfect and pluperfect and the great news here is that there is nothing new to learn other than what I'm about to tell you. So, to form the future perfect passive, which is going to mean I will have been loved, we do exactly what we did to form the perfect passive, except that instead of adding the present tense of sum, you add the future tense of sum. So the future perfect passive of amo goes amatus ero, amatus eris, amatus erit, amati erimus, amati eritis, amati erunt. So what could be easier than that? Now, as you now know, when I say amatus, I could have said amata or amatum because that ending on the end of the PPP agrees with the subject. If the subject is masculine, it'll be us. If she is feminine, it'll be a. And if it is neuter, it'll be um. And in the plural, amarti or amartai or amarta. Okay? The other verbs do exactly the same. So, future perfect of moneo, for example, would be monitus ero, monitus eris, monitus erit, moniti erimus, moniti eritis, moniti erunt. And however irregular the verb, as long as you've got its PPP, you can form the future perfect passive. And I'm not even going to pause for breath before showing you how the pluperfect passive goes, you can probably already guess. You take the PPP, and instead of adding the present or the future tense of sum, you add the imperfect tense. So, pluperfect passive of amo, which is going to mean I had been loved, is going to go amatus eram, amatus eras, amatus erat, Amati eramus, amati eratis, amati errant. Okay, really, really simple stuff. So, that is now all of your indicative tenses, active and passive, for all your regular verbs of the four and a half main conjugations. Okay, uh, we can do a little bit of practice just to prove that it's as easy as it looks. Uh, we are in book two, we are in chapter five, and we could be having a look at page 43, just to show how easy this is. So if we wanted to, for example, say, the gift will have been given to the small boy. Okay, Latin for gift is donum. So the subject is donum. Will have been given, goes at the end, to the small boy. Uh, Dative singular of puer, puero, small, parvo, so puero, parvo, and then it will have been given. Latin for to give is do, principal parts do, dari, dedi, datum, slightly funny do, that it goes datum, not datum, but you know, it's just one of those things. So we go to datum, we change um to us to get the PPP, and that's datus. We then make that agree with the subject, which is neuter, the gift, so it becomes datum, that's nominative neuter, singular, and it will have been given, we add erit. Okay, so, donum puero paro datum erit. And then we'll do a pluperfect one, uh, so we've got uh, at number nine in this exercise, the king had been driven out of the city during the night. Okay, the subject is the king, Rix. Verb at the end, had been driven out. Uh, he'd been driven out of the city, so ex urbe. During the night, now, remember our expressions of time? 
expressions of time you may learn by this rhyme, prepositions you never must use, within which and when, use the ablative case. Okay, so during the night, that's when it happened. It happened during the night. So we need the ablative case of the Latin for night. So we get nocte. And just a funny little thing about that, actually there is a very common adverb, noctu, which means by night. So we could have noctu or nocte. And then he had been driven out. Um, now, the, the Latin for to drive is pello. Uh, we could actually use a compound verb there and use ex pello. So the king had been driven out. Pello, pellery, peppoli, pulsum. So we want uh, PPP of Pello would be pulsus, and if we're doing ex Pello, it'll be ex pulsus. Uh, he had been driven out, ex pulsus erat, or just pulsus erat. So we end up with uh, rex ex orbe noctu pulsus erat. And then just a little one in uh, going the other way. There's something called exercise 5.5 in the book. Uh, and if we do one of those, we've got Puella missera in arche quinquetiis manere coacta erat. Okay, verb at the end, coacta erat. That's a pluperfect passive from cogo. Now, it just shows you have got to learn your principal parts. Cogo, cogre, coegi, coarctum. So, coarcta erat. She had been compelled. Back to find out whether there was a subject known in the nominative singular, and we had Puella Missera, the wretched girl. So, the wretched girl had been forced, manere, to remain in Arche, in the citadel, that's from Arx, Arx, Arceus, feminine as citadel. So the wretched girl had been forced to remain in the citadel, quinque dies, that's an expression of time in the accusative, for five days. Okay, so you know, pretty easy stuff. The great thing about these perfect passives and future perfect passives and pluperfect passives is they're sort of quite recognisable. You've got the two bits, you know, coarcta erat or pulsus erat. Um, you also know whether the subject is masculine, feminine or neuter because the PPP ending tells you that. It's either us or a or um or it's e or i or a in the plural. Uh, so, you know, I, I think they're great little chaps. OK, now we're going to finish this lesson by doing a little bit more English into Latin work. I always say that this is the nitty-gritty of learning the language. If you can stick it into the language rather than just translate it out, you know, you really have this taped. So we're going to look. There is something called Exercise 5.6 in the book. It's a, what I call a slab of English, which you're going to translate into a slab of Latin. Uh, and it goes like this. A Roman citizen had been sent into the fields because his father did not love him. OK, so we're going to tackle that. We grab the first clause. A Roman citizen had been sent into the fields. And we do our subject, a Roman citizen. Civis Romanus, nominative singular. So a Roman citizen had been sent, verb will come at the end, into the fields, in plus the accusative means into, in agros. Now, the main verb in this sentence is had been sent. But we've got this little clause, because his father did not love him. And we're actually going to do that clause now, and the main verb is going to come right at the end. Okay? So
So, you know, you, you've got to be careful that you don't forget to do it. Yeah, we will get there, I promise you. But so far, we've just got the first bit of this clause, a Roman citizen into the fields, and then we're going to do the little subordinate clause that tucks inside this main bit. Okay, so we've got, because his father did not love him. Latin for because. Quod. His father. Now, it's, this is the subject of the subordinate clause. So, pater eius, the father of him, okay, because his father did not love him. Uh, the verb in the subordinate clause goes at the end of the subordinate clause, so we're going to leave did not love, but let's get him, eum, okay, from iser id. So, quod pater eus, eum, non amabat. He did not love him, he was not loving him. It's a continuous action in the past that he was not doing. So that's why we're using the imperfect. Okay, so quod pater eus, eum non amabat, and now that main verb for the main sentence, which comes right at the end, had been sent, missus erat. Okay, so just notice how when you're translating into Latin and you've got uh, a sentence with a subordinate clause as part of it. So you've got two verbs, one of them being subordinate to the other. The main verb of the main clause comes right at the end and tucked inside you've got the subordinate clause. Okay, okay, on we go. The people of Rome were angry and accused the citizen. Now, the people of Rome, this is where language is so wonderful and brilliant for the brain. Uh, the people in Latin is populus. Now, that is a singular noun, a masculine singular noun. Populus of Rome, Romanus, were angry. Now, in, in English, we say were angry and we're expecting a kind of plural verb. But... The subject of this verb is singular. It's populus. So we need our verb to be singular. And it will be erat. So they were angry. Eratus erat. It's almost as if we were saying the Roman people was angry. Now that sounds completely wrong in English because when we say people, we mean a plural noun. But uh, to the Romans, populus was a singular noun. And then on to the next clause, joined by and, et, and accuse the citizen. Now, the subject of accused is still the Roman people, so it's still singular. And that verb will go at the end of this next clause. So, and accuse the citizen. The object is the citizen. Kiwis, a citizen, we want the accusative singular. So we get kiwem. So, et kiwem akusawit. Okay, on we go. The boy, however, wanted to save the old man. Okay, subject. Puer, tamen, however. Puer, tamen. Wanted to save the old man. Wanted, main verb at the end. And we'll put to save with that. So, wanted to save the old man. Now, the old man is the object, goes in the accusative case. Senex is an old man in Latin, and the accusative of that is senem. Now, wanted to save, main verb goes at the end, wanted, so the infinitive, to save, comes next, servare. Okay, that's the present infinitive of servo. Servare copiebat. He wanted to save. Servare copiebat. For the father was loved by the son. Okay, now the Latin for four is enim, but it always comes second word, not first. So, so the subject, the father, pater, 
Elim, was loved, that'll go at the end, by the son. Now remember, agents and instruments, if the person doing the passive verb isn't a person or an animal, he or she is an agent, and we do use a preposition. Okay, so by the son, are filio, and then was loved. Now this Again, you know, we've talked about simple past. When do we use the imperfect and when do we use the perfect? Well, he was loved. This means a continuous thing. He, he, he was loved on and on and on, continuously. So we need the imperfect passive of amo, amabator. So we get pater enim, afilio, amabator. Okay. And, and the story carries on for a bit, and I, uh, you know, and I won't do it all for you. You can do the rest for it yourself. Uh, it's, it's in the book, um, and check the answers to check you've got it right. But the main point of this lesson is to show you that future perfect and pluperfect passives are very simple. Instead of adding the present tense of sum, you're adding the future tense of sum or the imperfect tense of sum. All the other rules apply. In other words, you. Uh, make it agree with the subject, and that's it. That's all our tenses done. Uh, so, hope you found that relatively straightforward. Next time, I'm going to show you some pretty fancy little tricks you can do with the PPP, just to make your Latin even more flash than it probably is already. And we'll probably do a bit of revision. We're, you know, getting lots of stuff under our belt now, which uh, I am afraid I do expect you to have learnt by heart. Uh, some of you are telling me that, you know, the learning by heart is going well. Some of it harder than others, but, you know, that's all part of it. Uh, just keep going back over it again and again and again until it's absolutely firmly lodged. And I will see you very soon on this channel.